الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها الزوجها وبثها منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يوتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير هادي هادي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر الأمور محتفاتها وكل محتفة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل دلالة في النار اتقوا الله يا عباد الله في أنفسكم في الله عباد الله in your own selves واتقوا الله في بيوتكم and fear Allah as it regards your homes واتقوا الله في أزواجكم and fear Allah عباد الله as it regards your spouses واتقوا الله في أولادكم and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it regards your children اتقوا الله في كلامكم and fear Allah by what you say اتقوا الله في نياتكم and fear Allah by what you intend اتقوا الله في عمالكم and fear Allah in what you do اتقوا الله فيما تمشي إليه the places you go اتقوا الله فيها in those places fear Allah in the places that you go وعنت في الشوارع في سيارتك and you in the car fear Allah in the car and when you get out of the car fear Allah when you get out of the car and when you go to the store when you go to Walmart or go shopping for food fear Allah then because you and I don't know when our last day is to come. And we cannot act minute by minute as though we had that minute all together. And you and I know where that minute is going to lead us. Because you know whether you come here once a week or five days a week. For the most part, in Philadelphia, I think the name is King Session. Is that what it's called? Or King Session or whatever it's called. I'll try to get it better. I'll pronounce it. I'm new here. It's King Sassam, brothers. It's King Sassam, sisters. It's all down to King Sassam. We'll unify on King Sassam. We'll come together on King Sassam. So no matter who you think you are, or how many times you think you need to pray, or if you should be an adulterer or a fornicator, or if you're a drug dealer, or if you're scared that I'm drug, that I'm dragged the drugs up, and now you're sticking folks up in your home. Are you shooting crap in the street? It took a law, brother. Because you're shaming our religion. It took a law, brother. Because what you do is you bring shame down upon my children. And they don't even live in Philadelphia. I take it personally. And every man who knows a man like that should take that personally. That he's across the way, across the road, sticking up folks and shaming the Muslims. It took a law, Aki. It took a law. You mean to tell me that a law takes away the thing which was a fitness for you in the first place, the dope, and now you're going to turn to something more haram. You're going to endanger people's lives and kill them because they took away your dope? You're a fool. Don't have to call you by name. You're a fool. 
So here we are once more in Germantown Masjid. We're going to sit down here in the rug, make a little salah. Some people have the arrogance to call it a bump in my head. A bump in my head. No, you bump your head when you go against the book. You have bumped your head when you went against the sunnah. You bumped your head when you thought this was the Mardi Gras. You think this is a masquerade? Sisters, you too. What do you think this is, the masquerade? This is not a masquerade party. You've been fly on my space. The only space you got is in King Sesame. That's your space. And you're going to ask three questions. You're going to be asked about your deen. You're going to be asked about your Lord. You're going to be asked about your religion. Your prophet. That's your space. That's your question. That's yours. So I want to begin the chutbah by welcoming all the ghetto fabulous brothers and sisters who come here once a week and sit down on the rug to bump your head. This ain't head bumping. This is a salah. A salah. This is a salah that prevents for the truth of salat maker. That he prevents him from being a hated one and hating. Prevents Bari that he's a rebellious one in the society. This salah prevents that. For the one who establishes the salah correctly. For the one who establishes the salah correctly, it cures. It stops him. He makes him quit. Oh, Muslims. Occasional head bumpers and others. Marriage is a great act of kindness bestowed by Allah to his servants. Marriage has many benefits that come from it and from the way, because it is the way of the prophets, alayhi salatu salam, and messengers. Allah Ta'ala has said, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلًا مِّنْ قَبْلِكَ وَجَعَنَّا لَهُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَذُلِّيَّةً Allah made marriage the way of prophets. So when you're telling people that you believe in Islam, and when you're telling people that you believe in the messengers, and you believe in the books, understand the messengers were married. And indeed, we have sent messages before you, meaning before Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and made for them wives and offspring. Allah has presented the benefits of marriage in many verses of the Holy Quran, or Noble Quran. Qala Taala, Wallahu jaal lakum min alfusikum aswaj and wajaal lakum min aswajikum banina wa hafida wa razaqakum min al-tayyibat. And Allah has made for you spouses of wives. Of your kind, and I made for you from your wives, sons, and grandsons, and has bestowed on you good provision. And among his signs is that he created for you wives from among yourselves. That you may find peace in them. And he put between you affection and mercy. He put between you, Allah put between the people. Allah put between the spouses. He put between them mercy and affection. Allah put between spouses mercy and affection. Allah put between spouses mercy and affection. So when you don't find mercy and affection between the spouses, there's something wrong. Allah knows best with their connection to the one who puts love and affection between spouses. There's something wrong in their connection. Verily in that, indeed are signs for people who reflect. The Quran informs us of numerous verses that command that people get married and should, and should desire marriage. And the Quran clarifies the rights of marriage and the fruits that marriage brings. Like living kindly with your spouse and not harming one another and not harming your spouse. And it tells of everything that must bring the two spouses into a righteous partnership and a good, pure life together. A righteous partnership and a good, pure life together. Not fighting like cats and dogs. 
and not using the language of the street, the profanity, which is meant to curse their family members and curse their homes, showing that neither he nor she are educated enough to even steal their tongue in the heat of anger. This is what this religion, this is what this deed brings to his practitioners, practitioners. Those who practice Islam, Sahihan, those who want decency from Islam, those who want decency, 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 decency. Not indecency, indecency, indecency. Some people are known throughout the whole globe as being just a bunch of indecent fill in the blank. Just a bunch of indecent, just straight out indecent. Ain't got no decency people. Ain't never known no decency. Ain't got no decency. Ain't got no decency. Some people know the whole globe wide. Go to any part of the world and ask them, who are those people right there? Uh, them people, well, according to what they said, they was... We want to be politically correct here, so we ain't gonna say the word. They just a bunch of ask anybody who am I? Oh, you are. You know why? You know why? Cause you like it that way. Hear what I say? Cause you like it that way. You want to get out there and hip hop it and rap it. You let them call you a bunch of, and everything that goes with that word, you like it that way. You buy it. Got you pay spend money for it. Some of you still spend your wealth on being called up. Because you like that. Huh? That's honor. Ain't it? And sisters, if you can't see what I'm doing, I'm giving a parenthesis for a certain word. I'm sure everybody's got the word. Because see, after all this time, after claiming to be a god, a Rudy Bilaim, a Shaitan, a regime, and after, and after claiming to be a so and so, we are God, we the cream of the planet Earth, we this, we that, well, we just a bunch of. After all this time, done come back full circle to being a. I'm sorry, I got to burn up my card. Because I don't want to be a, I want to be a brother. I want to be a Muslim. I want to be a believer. I want to be a father. I want to be an uncle. I want to be a grandfather, but I don't want to be a, I tell you, I fight being a, and everything that goes along with it. The day skin color is an attitude. Oh, broke down. Who don't know right from wrong? Oh, broke down. Who ain't know nothing? Oh, broke down. Who ain't got nothing? Oh, broke down. Who don't know nothing? Oh, broke down. Who don't got nothing? Oh, broke down. Who don't know how to take care of his children? He don't take care of his kids. He don't do nothing. He's all broke down, dangerous. No hope in his life. You can have that. You can have that. You can keep that. You gonna buy that? Go have it. Go keep it. I don't want it. There ain't nothing to it. There's no honor. There's no decency. It has no history of decency. Go try to bring some. Bring one point of decency from it. Bring it. Say it's good. Say it's decent. And I'll tell you what, whenever I talk like this or anybody talks like this, you don't like it, you know what you do? You do that same old thing. You take your hand, you take it on your money, say, I was going to give him something, you know, but today I'm going to be a whole stingy, and I ain't giving him nothing. That's, you know, that's your response to this. Can't even stand the truth about our reality. You don't like it. So you hold your money back. No, you say, it's the administration. It's Germantown's reputation. Well, system is Germantown's reputation. What about you on my space? What about y'all on my space saying you go to Germantown Masjid, telling the whole world internet, I'll go to Germantown Masjid. 
I don't get the logic there. You don't like it. You won't support it. But you tell everybody in the, in the, in the space that you go here. And this is not about a master. Wherever you go, I don't want to be accused of being a Hizby because I'm not a Hizby. But because I'm sitting here today and sitting in front of you, I'm saying it to you here today. And you can take it any way you want to take it. But please, if you just want to be a low down, dirty, dangerous, then please don't do that here. And if you don't really pray, except once a week to be seen, you need to get your program straight. Because that is not Islam. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam, wa alayhi wa sallam, wa alayhi wa sallam, wa alayhi wa sallam, wa alayhi wa sallam. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after a marital contract between men and women, between men, I should say, after a marital contract between men, see, it's between men. See, a man that tries to slip around behind the wali, he has problems with himself. He has manhood problems. He can't face that wali. See, this is about, this is mano y mano, man. This religion is face to face. You trying to slip? Ain't no slipping in this dean, brother. If you, you practice it, you get stronger and stronger and more honest and more honest. And whenever you try to slide past, slide around, slide through, you slide yourself into trouble with your Lord. Trying to slide. It's not the dean of slip slide. It's mano y mano. Face that other man. Face that wali and say, I would like to get married. And if he says no, if he has an Islamic reason for saying no, then you might have to go somewhere else. But don't try to slip past him. That's not for you to do. So let's say that everybody's on the up and up. And they ain't trying to pick the sister off the street while selling her some oil. And they're trying to slip in and say, look, I'm, I'm giving the sister a dollar. I'm giving a dollar. Okay, you giving a dollar, I ask you. Ask yourself, do you know the wajibat of salah? You know the ahkam of salah? You giving dawah. This, this deals with you. You giving dawah. Do you know the wajibat of salah? You know the ahkam of salah? You know how many they are? If your answer is yes, barakallah fiqh. You can count them down. You know what they are? Not saying you should give dawah, but at least you're coming close to being really sincere about how concerned you are about the deen you practice for the salvation of your soul. You're not playing games in the street with the women. Here again, shaming the Muslim community. Not just yourself. Ihdina sirat al mustaqeen. Guide us to the sirat al mustaqeen. Guide us, not guide me. But guide us. Your jama'ah, your ummah. You represent your ummah wherever you go, you men and women. We haven't come to this part of our life yet. Sisters, yeah, we seen you out there in your niqab with the beatbox rolling. You think this is Mardi Gras or a Halloween party where you can dress up and just shame out the religion and give everybody a bad impression about what this deen, the people who don't know it, about what it is. We haven't got there yet. The brothers are talking. And we should always talk first. The brothers are talking. So after... The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after he put his hand in that man's hand and then he made dua for them. وَإِذَا رَفَعَ الْإِنسَانَ إِذَا تَزَوَّجَ قَالْ بَارَكَ اللَّهُ لَكَ وَبَارَكَ عَلَيْكَ وَجَمَّ بَيْنَكُمَا فِي خَيْرٍ Abu Huraira said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa would congratulate the married couple. This is important. He would congratulate the married couple after khutbah to hajjah and after they have the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the proposal and the agreement, then the Messenger of Allah said, so because this is the end of the contract, then he would congratulate them. When the Messenger of Allah so congratulated a man on the marriage, he said, May Allah's blessing be for you and upon, uh, for you too. And may his blessing be upon you too and combine both of you in good deeds. This is the way the Messenger of Allah so said, congratulated people who got married. Those of us who are not getting married are going to, to, to Mr. Chickenfoot, who doesn't understand the ahkam of, of, of Islam. On the, I'm on the block I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the imams of the masjid. 
I'm talking about, you know, we hiding off in the corner. Me and my boy, we're going to shake hands. It's going to be cool. He don't even know enough to congratulate you. That's not the way you get married. And don't, this is not just for us. This is global. The Egyptian brothers will tell you this is happening in Egypt right now. The Egyptian brothers will tell you that the Egyptian imams get up and they speak about this very issue. Sliding in the marriage at the corner store. And that kind of thing. They'll tell you, just ask them. The Abu Haredo said that the messenger of Allah when, when he congratulated people, he said this dua to the people. Means that when he congratulated and he made supplication for them on the occasion of their marriage. Why did he do this? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why did he say, Barakallahu lak, wa barak alayk, wa jamma baynukuma fi khayr. Why? As with many things, before Islam, people had a saying they used to say at their marriage. And this saying, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, did not like it. He didn't like it, and he stopped them from saying it. What did the pre-Islamic Arabs say when people got married? That the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, did not like, and therefore he changed it to a dua of baraka? Simple. They would say, Arrafai wal bani. Arrafai wal bani. Two words. What does it mean? May you live in harmony and give birth to sons. Sons only. May you live in harmony and may your children never be a girl. Now, Remember what we're talking about. The saying of theirs was a reflection of their cultural intense disdain for girls. And they're hating to see them be born into their families. Those who read about Islam know it's true. Not just read about Islam. Let's talk about what we actually heard with our ears in our lifetime. What the Quran says, We either bushida ahad the hum bil unta, dhalla wajh, buswaddam wa huwa qadim. And when the news of the birth of a female is brought to any of them, his face becomes dark and he's filled, and he's filled with inward grief. We come from a society, actually, that has a Christian background and a Greek background and a Roman background. Now, in case you didn't know, the Christians believe that the creation of Eve, they call her Eve, that she was the one that tricked Adam into abiding the, 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 the fruit of life, and then therefore that caused all of Adam's problems. The Greeks believed that the world was full of men only, and then their god, Zeus, who later on became Dios, same word, Zeus, Dios, who later on became Dios, he, they believed that there was only men on the world, and he, then he created a woman to punish all of them, to put them in misery. Her name was Pandora. Pandora is in the Greek mythology, the very first woman in their mythology was created. And in her hand, not a box, she had a jaw. They say Pandora's box, but it's actually Pandora's jaw. Pandora had a jaw, and she was told never to open the jaw. And so then after she got married, and all the men said, don't marry Pandora. I forget her husband's name. This is the first marriage. Now, imagine a world full of men. There's no women. I don't know what the Greeks was into, but they was into something kind of shady, if you ask me. So here they were, Pandora. She opened the jar, and then she let out death, pestilence, poverty, being in debt, all sorts of misery at her hand. So see, the Christians had it in for the women. She is the cause of their misery. And also, the Greeks had an end for women. She's the cause of their misery. And then the ancient Arabs thought that women, having birth, coming to family, that they were a curse. Until in fact, they buried them alive. So I ask you, brothers, some of us come from an all-male society. We didn't start there, but we got put in prison in an all-male society. And many of us used to reach out to who? Reach out to a woman. Because she's softer, easy to manipulate. Was it love? 
Allah knows best. Was it love or was it need? So we don't know whether it was love or not. Could be manipulation. So I say to you, brothers, we're going to start a discourse, bidni lay ta'ala, coming up about our relationship between men and women. Because in Islam, nukrim and mar'a, we honor her. Nam, she, we are the president. We are the governor. We the one brings discipline. We the main teacher of our wives. However, with honor, not manipulation or undue dependency upon her and her wealth. But we take the strong hand, barakallah fikum, and we don't do adultery. Because adultery is a destroyer. So let's begin the discourse, be the night to about that topic. Is it marriage or is it adultery? Walk him